Hey, Threadheads, it is field trip day. Do you have your signed permission slip? No? Don't worry, I worked it out with your mom. It's all good. We're gonna go see what we can see under the sea. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, family. It's time to hit the streets. I've got good news today. It's time to be the change. So most aquariums are all about the looking. This one is too, but it's also about the touching. Aaron Clark joining us right now, and that was your goal with this aquarium. Y'all wanted it to be interactive. Absolutely, we want everybody to get their hands wet, to appreciate the animals a little bit differently. So if you want to do this, we're here at our Shark and Ray touch tank. So pull your shark, wait, shark and Ray. Shark and Ray. So there's a shark in here. There's a couple of them. Yeah, we've got some smaller bearded okay. sharks swimming around. You want to touch them differently, I'm supposed. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But we've got our rays here in front of us. So pull your sleeves up there a okay. little bit because they do get excited and want to splash. Okay. With two fingers. Put it in the water, and they can. They'll come on over, and you get to feel what they. Hey, ah, look at this. The soft skin, but then that kind of cartilage that's underneath the surface. And then, if you're feeling much more adventurous... I'm, I'm feeling it. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so take this fish and stick it right in between. Hold on. <laughs> Your two front fingers. Look what they're not moving fast I'm enough. not moving, but it's my fault. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They're hungry. And then you'll submerge it in the water, and they'll come on over and suck it right out of your hand. They sure will. Hey, there you go. Don't take the knuckle, just the fish. Just the fish. How about one more? Absolutely. All right, I'm feeling well, good. I wasn't... See, you were a pro there. I'm trying. I missed this one. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. This is where it's at. Special of the day. There you go. It's almost like they give you a little kiss, They too. do, yeah. They're just coming over. <laughs> They're so excited. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> really. But as you said, if people don't get wet in this exhibit or don't get their hands wet. We're not doing it right. And, yeah. you know, we wanted it to be much more than just looking at them. Yeah. Um, engaging with them, you get a much better appreciation for them. There's something about that sense of touch, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. We know a teacher in South County who knows the thing about the importance of touch. She's a teacher at Blades Elementary School in South County, and she knows very well the importance of a big old hug. Hugs for Life is an after-school club for kindergarten through fifth grade. The purpose of the group is to talk about our feelings, uh, learn some coping strategies, as well as just be there for each other. After my oldest son, Stephen, died, there was one particular night, about a month after he died, where I couldn't sleep because the word hugs was constantly on my mind. Stephen gave the best hugs, always big, two arms around you. I was like, God, what is this? What is hugs? What do you want me to do with this? A few weeks after that, my husband and I went hiking. And on our way home, I looked over at him and I said, oh my gosh. I said, I know what it is. It's hugs for life. It's hugs for life. And I said, hugs means help us get strong. And I said, the number four means all aspects of a, of a person. The physical part, the mental part, the emotional part, and the spiritual part. So I thought, I need to do something about this. Some days I am sad, so I'm able to tell my friends. You come here and you can talk about your feelings when we sit around in a circle. Say that you're sad about something and you've been holding it on, you can come here and express your feelings. If you don't express it in front of the whole class, you are able to express it to a teacher. A lot of things are happening in my life, like people passing away or pets passing away, and I really like that I can share that. So like we're talking about our feelings, and we go around the circle and I can share them because most of the time I don't share my feelings. If I'm having a bad day, I can just go here and I can like tell everybody about it and then I'd feel much more better. These kids know that teachers go through, we have feelings too, just like the kids, and we're all in this together. After I talked to the boys and girls about Stephen and about just my loss and losing a child, we decided, um, I decided that we would make the hug cards along with um, giving the candles to people in the community who have lost a child. I've delivered 30 candles so far. Personally, it makes me feel like I'm not alone. That was the biggest thing for me. I feel empathy a lot when I do this. I normally feel sad that that happened for them, and then when I give them the card, I hope that they feel happy. It makes me feel like, wow, wow, that God would use me 
to do this kind of work. You know, I miss Stephen so, 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 so much. But it is so good to know that God's not going to leave me alone in this. And I'm going to keep asking him for guidance. And as long as he just keeps telling me, keep leading me, and I'll keep doing what he, what he wants me to do. What a great program. What Shannon's done is create this safe space for these students to know that they're safe and know that they can share their feelings and know that they're cared about. Really awesome. And they know the value of a big old hug. These rays, let me tell you, they're all about the touching. From a touch to a nibble, we've gone from hands on fish to fish on our hands. These are the doctor fish, and they're giving me a manicure by eating the dead skin off my hand. Right now, it's what they do. Just lend them a helping hand. Speaking of lending a helping hand, we met an organization called Endless Opportunities Worldwide, and they found their niche in moving to the needs of veterans. Endless Opportunities Worldwide is a nonprofit that my wife and I started about six years ago. We saw a need in our community and around the world, and we just decided to take a jump and see what we could do. I was in Central America with one of my missions mentors, and we were just driving around Central America for a few weeks, and we just had a trailer full of stuff, and we would just stop and help people whenever the need arose. And after doing that for a, a number of days, I just looked at him and I said, we could do this forever and there would still be people that would need to help. So we started our organization originally to do international humanitarian aid and missions trips. And it kind of grew into helping out with local community service projects, uh, helping out veterans and single moms is our biggest focus here in the St. Louis area. Uh, I myself am a disabled combat veteran. I was in Iraq war in 2007 and got injured and came back and started looking for ways to connect with other veterans in the community and be able to find a new sense of purpose for my life. Had some friends that didn't make it. I'm not the guy that sits back and watches, I'm the guy that does whatever I can. So jump in, find something to do, something to help. I've had more troubles being since uh, my brain surgeries and stuff, just cognitive issues and remembering things and being able to walk around and just function as a person. So when he got really sick, it was like losing a husband, kind of. So when Chris came in and offered to do everything for us, and it was like not feeling alone. It means a lot. So now where the basement is livable, and they have a bathroom and a bedroom and a living room down there. The house is pretty small. Like for nine people, this is pretty dinky. And. Um, when the basement finally got finished and the first night I went down there, I got more work done in a day than I think I got done all month. Being able to go downstairs and get away from all of this, or like if Chris is sick, I can go downstairs and I can pray and just kind of, I guess, be a person again. Because sometimes I'm, I really am stretched really thin. I try not to admit that, but it's, it's really difficult sometimes. And then in that, let's see if we can build a deck. And if we're gonna build a deck, it needs to be a nice deck. The deck for us, just being able to be outside of the four walls of the house, he wasn't getting any like fresh air because he couldn't physically get out. It's a huge blessing to have all this stuff feel more like a, a person. I just feel like uh, God really gives each and every one of us um, skills or you know things that we're really good at that we can help and it's just a matter of finding that certain way that you can help. I don't know that there are words that you can put on that when somebody does something for you that you can't pay back. I don't know that there are earthly words for that. Whenever we started Endless Opportunities, I kind of, I just told God, you know, I'm a poor farm kid from DeSoto. I don't, I don't have a lot, but anything you bring, anything you bring will do it. And he's provided, and he's opened doors and opportunities to help people uh, beyond my wildest dreams. We just work as hard as we can to just do what we can with what we have as much as we can. And that kind of keeps us going every day. What a great organization. Oh Nothing God. like a veteran to know the needs of other veterans. A shared experience brings empathy and an ability to move to those needs in a special way. I want to give equal time to the right hand. Don't want to be uneven, you know. Take it away, guys. Not you. You stick around. we got more thread coming up. Our first mission is bring glory to God. That's why we're here. We have a talent. It just happens to be banking. So M1 Bank is banking on a mission um, fueled by the power of purpose. It gets a point in your life where you gotta live it every day, not just believe it. I'm believing that this is going to catch on and, and we're all going to thread up. For us in our house, this is how we're gonna serve the Lord and, and His purpose. And we're gonna do it through the financial institution that happens to be called in one bank. Hey friends, let's be honest, nobody knows what the future holds, but we all know what we want our future to look like. 
Lower taxes, guaranteed income, financial stability. Sound pretty good? Now, all you have to do is call an attorney, an insurance agent, a money manager, and a tax advisor. Or you can call the one place that has it all under one roof. Our friends at Circle of Advisors secure us. In 20 years, not a single client has lost even a dime to market volatility. They've helped walk with the thread since day one to help secure our future, and they'll do the same for you too. John Larson's Allstate Agency is all about family. He's a second generation agent. He loves on his team like family. And we're proud to say that he and his team are now members of the Thread family. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. You know, I love what I do. I'm an insurance agent. I take care of people's lives every single day. I've got locations in Winsfield, Chesterfield, and Troy, Missouri. But more than that, this business has become a ministry. Call us and find out what makes us different. Come see John and his team, and I guarantee you, they'll treat you like family too. You no doubt know Don Brown. Don Brown Chevrolet. Don Brown Chevrolet. Don Brown Chevrolet. And you probably know that Don has a flair for fashion and a knack for cars, but he also has a heart for people. I learned from my father a long time ago, it's not about one person, it's about the entire community. It is a car business, but it's a people business. It's about the people. It's not about the products, it's about the people. If you're in the market for a car, come to Don Brown, where it's people over process. And we're proud to be part of the Thread family, and we'd love to be part of your family. We're with senior biologist Danny Heaps right now. We're at the St. Louis Aquarium at Union Station, and uh, you swim with sharks. Sure do. Does that make you nervous at all? Not at all. <laughs> it's all part of the job. What do you do when you go in there? What, what, what's your job? So a lot of our job is just general maintenance. Um, so we're doing a lot of scrubbing. We're cleaning our acrylic windows. Everybody has a nice view of our system. Um, sometimes we also do an occasional feeding down there. Um, but today, I think it's just going to be a little bit of scrubbing. There you go. So you ready to go? Yes. All right. 100%. Go do your thing. She swims with sharks. Swimming with sharks, now that sounds pretty scary. You know what else sounds scary? How about this? Living in a strange country where you don't know the language and you don't have any friends. That sounds pretty scary. But we met an organization that's moving to the needs of folks who are facing that fear. Meet Foray. Foray stands for Friends of Refugees and Immigrants, and it is an organization that partners with refugee and immigrant women who live in St. Louis, and we teach them to make jewelry and to sew, and then we sell the things that they make through festivals, our online store, and wholesale partners here in St. Louis and nationally. We received an invitation from our church to host newly arrived refugee families for a meal. One of them was a single mom with um, two school-aged children, and her husband had passed away in the camp. She didn't speak a word of English. She lived in a refugee camp for 17 years and probably had the equivalent of a second grade education. And so I couldn't quit thinking about her. From that meal, I kept thinking about it and starting to talk to different people who had either had business experience or experience in the refugee community to find out would this idea work? So the response was so positive that we launched um, a once a month meeting at New City Fellowship in South City and about 25 women from Nepal and Bhutan and a few African countries would, would gather together and we would laugh and um, try to practice English, have a devotional, um, divide up into sewing groups and then fast forward to today we are we're in this wonderful space, our own workshop, and we work with the same women over and over again until they're ready to not be part of the program anymore. We make sure that every woman has the tools she needs, whether it's jewelry making tools that she has um, that are her tools to use at home or if it's a sewing machine. Before, um, I don't know nothing like sewing skill, and then now I feel a little bit better. <laughs> She teaches a lot of the classes. Um, her sewing skills are wonderful. She makes all of our um, all of our model product for the women to make. Yeah, I love it. Um, everything I know, I want to share. <laughs> I want to teach. As part of our program, we pair each artisan with a volunteer mentor um, who's a Christian, and so she meets with her at least once a month in her home. The focus is grow a friendship, and so we are 
offering them an opportunity to taste and see that the Lord is good. If they're if they're not interested, that's okay. You know, we're going to love them right where they are. I think the statistic I've heard is maybe 10% of refugees or immigrants ever make an American friend or are ever invited into someone's home. So we we provide those things because we're making friends with them and they come into our homes. What has doing this ministry done for you? I needed to be able to look outward and not just focus on what was going on in my family and the difficulties we were facing, but be able to, to, to see God show up in a different place. Do you feel like you've learned more from them than they have from you? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I've definitely learned more from them. Hey everybody, it's time for the hot seat right here on the thread. We've got Aaron in the hot seat or on the hot bench, whatever you want to call it. Here's the deal, Aaron. We're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Questions are all aquatic themed. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, and you can ask your friends for help. Y'all ready to help out? Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right, you ready? Clock will start after I ask you the first question. Number one, an aquarium first and foremost needs a lot of this. Love. That, yes, fish. It, it's, it's fish. wet. Water. Fish. It's wet. Water. Yeah, water. Hey, you get it very nice. These creatures bear the same name given to the act of catching them. Rhymes with wish. Fish. Yeah, fish, absolutely. <laughs> what do fish drink? Water. 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 Yeah, absolutely. How many arms does an octopus have? Eight. Yes. A mommy shark and a daddy shark might produce a... Baby shark doo doo You couldn't do it without singing, could you? I knew she was going to sing. All right. Uh, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a... Fish. Fish, yeah, absolutely. And the easiest way to learn shorthand at the aquarium. Pet a piranha. <laughs> See, I've seen shorthand because... Okay, hey, guess what, Aaron? You just conquered the hot seat right here on the thread. Because a piranha we might... Yeah, shorthand. Hey, Tim, are you ready to meet this week's USA Mortgage Changemaker? You know I am. Come on. All right, Lynn, tell me how you're changing your community. Well, Tim, I'm changing my community with being part of VA REF, which is Veterans Association of Real Estate Professionals. And what we do is we help educate real estate professionals, teaching them VA home ownership awareness. Veterans don't realize they can get a home that they have a loan waiting for them. What drew you to this organization? Part of it starts with that my father was very passionate about being a Marine. How rewarding is it to serve those who served our country in such an amazing way? To see these people give, give, give without wanting anything, not thinking they deserve anything, it tugs at your heart. If you show that you care about your community, you're going to bring solidarity of happiness and peace amongst the people that we see every day. Wow, Kelly, another great story. Absolutely. There'll be another one next episode. Until then, you find your unique way to become a change maker. Welcome back to The Thread. You know, we'd be remiss if we didn't introduce you to the very first resident here at the St. Louis Aquarium at Union Station. It's Lord Stanley, and yep, he's a blue lobster. It was donated by Arnold's Lobster and Clam Bar in Massachusetts. Yeah, and the chances of Lord Stanley being born blue are one in two million. The St. Louis Blues had a 8,000 times better chance of winning the Stanley Cup in 2019 than of Lord Stanley being born blue. And his name, yep, Lord Stanley. Great honor to our St. Louis Blues who won the Stanley Cup. Treated like a champion here. And you know, because he's blue, makes him very susceptible to predators. So this is the safest place for him to be. Reminds me of another organization, Bridge of Hope. They treat every single guest that they encounter like they're the most important and rarest creature in the world because they are to Bridge of Hope. So Bridge of Hope started actually in my living room when I was really young. My parents started it, um, it started out as a small church. We had lots of barbecues in the backyard and just invited whoever wanted to come to come. And then it moved into this building and was just, we used one room of this building. We added Thursday morning breakfast 
um, for the homeless individuals within our community because we realized that was a huge need. And we started asking our community members, what are the things that you need access to that you just simply don't have access to? All of the things that we do really are things that people have expressed during those breakfasts. Many of our community are homeless individuals who don't have access to shower, don't have access to laundry, don't have access to GED tutoring, and they just need that little extra something that's closer to home that they don't have to fight so hard to get. We provide showers, laundry. We also provide a clothing room where uh, people can come and look and get clothes for job interviews or just to stay warm. My mother, Robin Boda, really focuses on assisting people who have insanely difficult educational trauma in their life. Um, being told they're stupid by their family, being told they're stupid by the teachers that are around them. And so she works through that trauma with each individual and is really an educational therapist. You went away to school. Yeah. What drew you back? I went to Kendall College of Art and Design, um, and I was—I actually got to teach a semester there and ran the ceramic studio. Um, but the minute that I got a call that my dad had a heart attack, I, I immediately knew I needed to go home. Slowly, I got roped in to working here. I ran the garden. She kind of rescued me about a year ago. I was doing her job and my job, and I and taking care of my husband who's sick, and I was very overwhelmed. She was born and lived in it. She gets the community. I was very hesitant at first, um, and I was hesitant with my faith at first. And I really believe that Bridge of Hope has pulled me so much closer to God than anything I've ever done. I'm learning to walk in the dark, and I fall every day, right? But that makes me like the people we serve. I'm no different than they are, no different. We're not their saviors. <laughs> That's not what we're about. Jesus is the savior, right? Um, we are just here to be useful to them and help them grow in the way that they want to. And what are their passions? And we ask them. So it's whatever the community is dealing with at that moment, we are going to be there with them. So my mother's rules are, God made me unique. I have strengths, I have weaknesses, I have something to learn, and I have something to teach. Is this worth it? I always ask myself that. But then the next thing I'll know, like a community member will come and encourage me. Somebody who I'm trying to help helps me. Like, this community does more for me than I could ever do for this community. And I love the fact that they didn't form the ministry and then expect others to adapt to it. No, they adapted the ministry to fit the needs of those they're serving and are still doing it. So good. And I want you to notice something about this story. That's similar to all the others. Lydia, who was going a completely different direction, is now running the ministry because she was brought back. By what? By the health problems of her father. That dark moment in their family's life was the instrument God used to get her back, to lead her into the passion of serving in this ministry. And how about her mom, Robin? She deals with the education side of the ministry. He was dealing with the dyslexia of her husband and her children that led her to be able to serve those students who are suffering from it as well. How about Jennifer at Foray? It was a serving overseas in Russia being a foreigner on foreign soil, knowing what it's like to not know the language and not have any friends there that led her to open foray for our refugees and immigrants, serving those in our city who don't know the language and don't have any friends and need a place of belonging. How about Chris with endless opportunities worldwide? He's a veteran. He knows what it's like to come back and try to get back into normal living here and he's now serving veterans in a powerful way through his experience and the experience of his friends. And Shannon Cress, it's the loss of her son, Stephen, that dark place that led her to starting this Hugs for Life organization at school, providing a safe place for students to just let down and share their feelings and know that they're accepted and loved and they can get a big old hug like Stephen used to give. Sometimes in our darkest places, God is doing his greatest work and we just don't always see it. Reminds me of the story of Joseph in the Bible. His brothers were tired of his dreams and talking about his superiority. They threw him in a pit. And he was picked up by traitors and sold into slavery in Egypt. But he raised to the head of Potiphar's house, a very powerful man, and he was given the keys to the home, run it, until Potiphar's wife framed him for misconduct and then he got thrown in prison. But there he met the cupbearer and the baker 
and he interpreted some dreams for them. And they said, if we get out of here, we'll remember you. Well, they got out and they didn't remember him until Pharaoh needed some dreams interpreted. And they said, we know a guy. And Joseph came up, interpreted the dreams and was given control over the country in charge of the food supply, making sure that no one went hungry, including his family that he was able to move in, his father who you thought he'd never see again, and his brothers who betrayed him. And what did he say to his brothers? What you meant for evil, God meant for good. Sometimes in our darkest moments, God is doing his greatest works. We're just not keen to see it. Maybe you're going through a hard place right now, a hard time. Light's hard to see in the midst of your darkness. Know this, God is there and he's working and he's always got something better in your future than in your past. And he's gonna do powerful things through it and through you and in you. You can book it because he promises it. Well, that brings us to the end, but not the end. You know what I'm talking about. Dad, oh. Oh. Ah, ah. Take that brawny man. If the underwater attractions don't float your boat, you can always find some action above ground. Right up, y'all. <laughs> Coming in hot. Spot Media Production Group. <laughs>